Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at John Wise. John Wise was a balloonist and an aeronautical engineer or a professor of aeronautics from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. And he lived throughout the 1800s and he made a lot of advancements in air travel via the balloon. He was one of the first and the most famous Americans to make discoveries in this field and we're going to be reading an excerpt from his uh self-written book about aeronautics and about his life this is going to be in regards to the idea of harnessing electrical atmospheric energy and he is arguing that he was the first scientist or balloonist or engineer to propose this idea and he goes into detail about the letters that he wrote with the director of the Smithsonian in regards to these developments. So we're just going to dive into this a little bit and then we'll talk a little more about John Wise and his other developments at the end of the video. And this is in reference to harnessing electrical energy with balloons. In the fall of 1857, I wrote to Professor Henry, secretary of the Smithsonian Institute, about it and my wish of having it tried with a large balloon that would go a mile or two high with metallic tractors and conducting wire to bring it down to earth. September 26, 1857, Professor Henry answered me. He says, It is a fact, established by abundant experiment and observation, that the difference of electrical intensity between the surface of the earth and the atmosphere increases as we ascend in the ladder. If we were to suspend a copper wire to a balloon, the lower end of which is insulated at the surface of the earth, the quantity and intensity of the electricity which would be given off from the lower extremity of the wire would increase with the elevation of the balloon, though the law of the increase with the elevation is not yet known. I doubt whether a sufficient quantity of electricity for practical purposes could be obtained in the way you propose. The electricity of the atmosphere, though greater in intensity, is very small in quantity, according to the experiments of Faraday, Poirier, and others. I would not wish, however, to discourage your experiments. It would give me much pleasure to see you in Washington and to have a long talk on the subject of atmospheric phenomena, etc., etc. In April 1858, I made my visit to Washington accordingly. I spent several days with Professor Henry, and after stating to him all I knew about thunderstorms and atmospheric phenomena, so far as I had observed and experienced the workings of nature, both in and outside of the clouds, I proposed to build a balloon expressly for these experiments, to be conducted under the auspices of the learned philosopher and the Smithsonian Institute to furnish gas, conductors, ropes, and meteorological instruments. And to this, the secretary at once agreed. The balloon was built and arrangements were instituted to make the experiments in August or September of 1858. Business, however, pressed so hard on him about that time in bringing out his report of the transactions under his charge that it was necessary to defer these experiments until the next summer. The following summer, in May 1859, I made an ascension with this balloon. It was labeled, or rather named, Smithsonian, and bore the motto, Pro Scientia et Arte. Having noted some remarkable phenomenon during this voyage, such as an incipient thundercloud, the formation of a water sprout hanging down from this cloud, the increase of the cloud into a regular thunder gust, and while sailing in the trail of the storm that is in the rear of its ascending vortex, encountering large drops of rain dashing against the balloon and oscillating fire as they struck the balloon. It is needless to say I hurried down upon this demonstration. The ascension was publicly made from the center square of Lancaster City, Pennsylvania. In this acknowledgement of this report to him, Professor Henry said, I shall probably have a few weeks vacation this summer and would be pleased to make some of the experiments with you which we have contemplated last summer. Please inform me when it would be most convenient 
to meet with you. When I received this cheering proposition from Professor Henry to make the experiment of bringing down atmospheric electricity with a view to its uses as a motor, I was busily engaged in making preparations for the great transcontinental balloon voyage from St. Louis to the Atlantic seaboard with the balloon Atlantic furnished by Mr. O. H. Geiger, with whom I had entered into a contract for the dictatorship of that enterprise. Business matters of the institution continually pressing upon Professor Henry and the rebellion already developing itself like an incipient thunderstorm was the cause of not making the experiment, and thus it was almost forgotten. However, this is sufficient to show that America has the first claim to the practical idea of appropriating natural electricity as a motor for engines, a natural power capable of pulverizing rocks, splitting up trees, knocking down masonry, and plowing up the earth, once only to be properly understood and properly harnessed to make it subservient to our human purposes. So besides proposing the electrical atmospheric energy and harnessing that from these balloons, they also say that John Wise uh, was the first man to discover the jet stream or the um, passage of air that basically happens above the clouds. He was the first to identify that this happens in a pattern and that you can use this pattern to uh, basically increase um, the efficiency of your flight. Now, they say that he utilized this information to follow the jet stream and make a flight from St. Louis to New York, which was one of the first um, and longest flights on a balloon ever made. Now, mind you, this is a hot air balloon. This has no way to steer. This is not a dirigible. This is simply a balloon that he floated above the clouds and simply followed the airstream the whole way to New York. So this is a man, at least the narrative says, made a lot of very accomplished uh, findings in the, in the area of air travel. Now they also say that he made the first air mail delivery when he made a postal delivery from Indiana. And they also say that he invented the parachute or he invented the modern parachute when he invented a hot air balloon that when uh, or if it would collapse, it would actually basically turn in on itself and turn itself into a parachute. And he actually had this happen when he hit a storm at 13,000 feet, the narrative says, and his balloon was basically popped. But instead of falling to his death, the balloon gently glided to the earth. John Wise is also said to have been the first aeronaut of the United States government. He was hired, they say, by Abraham Lincoln in 1861. Of note is prior to Lincoln's presidency, we had President Buchanan, who was also from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Not sure if that matters here, but we have John Wise being hired basically to fly a balloon as a reconnaissance mission, so to speak, to spy on the opposition. However, when he went to do so, he was quickly spotted. Uh, obviously, there isn't really a way to steer the balloon. So when he went to get away, they say that the balloon became tangled in some trees. And overall, it was a bad investment for the United States government. However, they do say that this idea of using a balloon um, to spy on the enemy was the first instance of basically a reconnaissance plane or a reconnaissance aircraft being used um, in war or in uh, battle. So I thought that was interesting. And overall, we just have all of these inventions or ideas that are attributed to John Wise of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So you would think maybe if you studied aeronautics or air travel or even war, maybe you would have heard this name. But I come to find that there's very little written about John Wise. There's also multiple John Wise that have seemed to have lived throughout history that have little fame. 
and it really convolutes the story and the history and how important this man really was. However, I'm just going to leave it there. I just wanted to show you what the current narrative says that this one man invented and all the things that he found by traveling in America in these hot air balloons. And he said to basically be the pioneer of that sort of travel in America and also the inventor or the first man to understand that you could use balloons to harness electricity. Meanwhile, the Smithsonian agreed and accepted this idea as fact, yet they said it was not practical and forgot about this invention, this technology, this advancement that we had the whole way back in the mid 1800s. In conclusion, John Wise founded the jet stream from his balloon, traveling higher than any other human had before, delivered the first packages from his balloon, harnessed electricity from the atmosphere of his balloon, and invented the parachute from his balloon. Yet information on the man is scarce and documents few and far between. His self-written analysis gives him credit, but we must ask if all these inventions are his own, how could someone so important basically be forgotten today? Besides a small four foot tall monument that sits currently in a front yard in Lancaster, this man has no dedications to his honor. Could John Wise be a character who was provided to give a face, quote unquote, to the outstanding narrative of balloon travel advancement and electrical engineering and harnessing? I'll wrap it up there. Thank you for being here. Please leave your thoughts and comments below, and I will see you very soon on the next video.